Joining us in the studio is Professor Andreas Lendlein, an expert on regenerative therapies. Now, what we've seen with the heart valves is a really, obviously, promises a great future. Will it be possible one day to substitute all parts of the body which are worn out or weak? Well, this example was just a good example to, to demonstrate the vision that we have in regenerative medicine. However, today there are only a few applications that are already realized and that are commercialized. Mm -hmm. There are like applications what? in the area of skin re, um, tissue engineering and the regeneration of small cartilage defects. Mm -hmm. but, but it sounds a bit like a fountain of youth. Will we be able to stop aging? And not, not necessarily stop aging, but we have today such an increase in the life expect expectancy that we see more age-related degenerative diseases. And our first aim, of course, is to work on strategies for, for these um, um, diseases. Mm -hmm. But if you reach all of the goals of regenerative therapy, I mean, medicine has reached what it wants. You are there. There's a tremendous difference is that we do not need a pharmaco treatment that is being applied on a regular basis. With just one application, then we have a full regeneration. This that is beneficial for the patients, mm -hmm. but maybe also that it is of socioeconomic interest. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting that in regenerative um, therapies and also in tissue engineering, chemistry in form of plastic actually meets biology and you brought us an example here from your lab. Could you actually um, show us what you can do with that? Yes, I have the material here, we call it shape memory materials and mm -hmm. such, such materials are able to memorize a second shape and this second shape can be recalled just by heating those materials. I'm doing this here with, uh, in a water bath. The water bath has 60 degrees C and I'm now going from a polymer stripe to a corkscrew-like spiral. That's quite amazing. What can you actually do with that? Well, the nice thing is that this material not only has shape memory, it's also degradable. So application mm -hmm. areas, for, in for instance, are minimally invasive procedures where we only work with small incisions. And the question that is to be asked in this context is how do we get a, um, a large bulky implant through the small incision mm -hmm. into the body? We can program the material, compress it, it goes into the body and then unfolds just by heating up from room temperature to body temperature. And where could you actually apply it? Maybe for stents? Is that a way? Yes, that is an example. So stents are used to keep blood vessels open and in this way we can place them nicely, minimally invasively and then they degrade. Mm -hmm. When they have performed their mechanical and physical stability that was needed and the blood vessel is regenerated, they just disappear. Mm -hmm. I mean, a spiral is uh, already a pretty nice shape, but can you do even more complicated things? Oh, well, we made intelligent sutures, sutures that not themselves and that apply a predefined stress to the wound lips to enable an optimum wound mm -hmm. healing. If it is applied too loosely, the suture, then we get scar tissue formation. If we are packing it too tight, we do not get a nice wound healing. So this intelligent suture are really an, a nice Magic. thing for surgeons. Magic, I'd say. No, multifunctional materials. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for the talk, Professor Andreas Lindlein.